This week on Blood Brothers TV. I grew up in southeast Arkansas down a big city of McGee. And when I was about five years old, I killed my first deer. My uh, dad and my granddad both were big deer hunters at the time. Uh, my dad more of a bird hunter than a deer hunter, but anyway, so my granddad took me under his wing and we hunted in a hunting club called Arkansas City Hunting Club behind the levee on the Mississippi River. And that's where I cut my teeth. Uh, didn't start bow hunting until I was about, say, 14 years old. Don't really know what prompted me to do that. Probably just getting closer to the big deer and, and uh, just having a little more fun with it. What drives me is, is getting a big deer under me. I mean, if I came up here and ran my cameras and didn't have a, a deer over 130 inches, I wouldn't go get in the tree. So, I mean, we've got family and work and, and things to do. And, and if there's not a giant out there, I don't even want to get in the tree. That's what gets my blood pumping, a big whitetail. I don't give a rip about hunting an elk or a, a muley or any of that stuff. I want to hunt a big whitetail. Cherokee Sports presents Blood Brothers, an ancestral bond between like-minded individuals that share one passion. Cherokee Sports, Blood Brothers TV, share your passion. There's no doubt that a big set of antlers appeals to every whitetail hunter out there, but a true trophy is in the eye of the holder. And this Blood Brother shed some insight in today's show as to what that exactly means. I'm Brett Fulcher with Cherokee Sports. Hope you guys enjoy today's show. We're proud to bring you hunts from blood brothers like this all over the country. Don't leave home without them. Now. I grew up in southeast Arkansas down a big city of McGee. And when I was about five years old, I killed my first deer. My uh, dad and my granddad both were big deer hunters at the time. We had a, we hunted behind the levee so you would have as many doe permits as you could stand. So we killed, <laughs> I mean, a lot of deer. So I got a lot of practice pulling the trigger. Of course, by doing that, it, it uh, gets you a little more acclimated with the outdoors. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. We, we um, saw a lot of deer down there. I mean, you would see 40, 50 deer sit behind the levee down there. That's why they, they had so many deer permits. And uh, you get a lot of practice 
we spent a lot of time in a tree. You know, you didn't get <laughs> you didn't get out at eight o'clock in the morning because the deer kept moving pretty much all day down there. It's November the eleventh. We're over in Missouri. Perfect morning. Everything's coming together. We got another big buck picture last night at about two a.m. I guess you'd call that this morning. We're hoping he's bedded up close to here. We're gonna to try to rattle here in a minute. See if we can dump a big old monster for you right here on film. It's my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Will. He turned 12 today. He'll be killing on film for y'all for too long. Stay with us, we're gonna rattle him up. 15 years ago, I had never really killed a sure enough big deer. And then it started getting better and better and better. And you know, like I say, I hunted down there till I was started college, so until I was 18 years old, that's the only place I ever knew. We didn't, only time I went out of town was when my dad would take me bird hunting out in Texas and stuff. When I got up around 20 years old, then I started going out there, and that's really when I started trying to chase a little bit bigger whitetail than what we were used to in Arkansas. Blood Brothers TV, we'll be right back. Cherokee Sports, solutions for the sportsman. The most mobile and realistic decoys from Cherokee Sports, Fusion Decoys. Another solution from Cherokee Sports. Welcome back to Blood Brothers TV. My entire life, Dad had probably 10 or 15 pointers. And I mean, it was a, a different breed of bird hunting. It's a lot, not like the kind of bird hunting you walk around and, and walk with a dog. I mean, he had the wide range dogs. I mean, they might run a half mile and come back and check on you. And, and we had the beeper collars. And uh, I mean, he was he's a high tech bird hunter for sure. That's what you call a close encounter right there, people. That deer. Give me some five cameraman. God, Brad. That happened. 
happens so freaking fast. This deer comes in, postures up to a couple button bucks, been eating hunters all day. Unbelievable. He didn't quite make it over the fence. <laughs> we can skin him right there. So it was a it was a big time. You could ride four wheelers and you're basically trying to keep up with the dogs to find out, you know, if they're pointed or not. And nine times out of ten they were. I mean, some some days we would raise 30, 40 coveys and uh, just have a, a huge time. And of course, by those dogs running like that, that's when we started seeing all the the big bucks because they were pushing them out. You know, they run those draws and and uh, next thing you know, a big old buck runs out of that thing. And I started getting a fever wanting to go out there and see if I could get after them. We started going to Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and um, Wisconsin even, Wisconsin. Like I said, until probably 15 years ago, I had never killed a deer over a probably 130 inch deer. And um, I mean, and the reason I didn't kill anything bigger than that is probably because I wouldn't let one walk that size. The guys that come hunting with me, what I tell them every year is if, I mean, they're always asking me, you know, what should I shoot, what should I shoot? If you think it's a trophy, and it's the biggest deer you've ever shot, then I don't care. I mean, if, if it's a trophy to you, then then you should shoot it. And that, I don't care if it's 100 inches or 200 inches. I try to set a standard at a 150, but that's really silly. I mean, you could have a six or seven point come out that doesn't score but 135. That's an absolutely, I mean, his body may be twice the size of this deer. You know, a trophy to, to me is a completely different thing to someone who hadn't, you know, touch deer hunting as, as hard as I've probably touched it. Blood Brothers TV will be right back. Fusion game calls from Cherokee Sports. Two calls fused together. Only one call to carry. Welcome back to Blood Brothers TV. 92 yards. I got an 85 yard bin, you want me to try it? <laughs> if a big deer comes out following those does and sees that decoy, it is on. Y'all get ready. Here comes something out of the bush. Another doe. I don't know, they're running like it's a buck. Is 
inside that little box. Okay. Contrary to what you read, they tell you that a deer will approach a decoy from behind. And that is false. They'll all try to circle and get in front of that deer. That spike's not even worried with them. That, that one little doe is watching us, boy. The one furthest to your right. That'd be a good shot on that doe right there. What's that, about 40? I can drill her right there. That'd be a long shot, boy. Be some pretty footage if I smoked her. He's a ten boy counting that drop down. He is screwed up. Yeah, he looks like he's three to me. Listen to that spike grunting, Jerry. We actually hunted a, 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 and this is my opinion, take it with a grain of salt, but we hunted a spot yesterday, 160 acre CRP, and it's got this little timber where a creek is down in the bottom in a corner. But we made the decision to take a decoy in there. Um, a decoy sets up to me better on a edge of a field or something. So it'll pull a buck from a long range off. But when you're in a bottom like this, I just don't think it's as good of an idea. But the, the decoy worked. You know, we had, like I said, 15, 20 deer in there yesterday afternoon and we had uh, a couple scent bombs out the does hung around in there good i you know the way that works again is if it, the more does you can get under you in a good spot like this where there's a bunch of acorns or a food source or a good creek bottom just something to hold them right there at, at the prime times you know right at daylight or right at dark then you know, i mean at any given second you can have a freak come out i mean just because you have that much doe activity under you This is why I love to hunt up here because at any moment, a 250 could walk out of the corner of this field and walk right by us, and, and it's game on. You just don't get that anywhere else. We come out here in the Midwest just for that reason. That's what gets my blood pumping, a big whitetail. I don't give a rip about hunting a elk or a, a muley or any of that stuff. I want to hunt a big whitetail. Blood Brothers TV will be right back. Welcome back to Blood Brothers TV. Going back to what is a shooter and what's not a shooter, a cardinal rule is if you have to think about it for a, even an instant, it's not a shooter. I mean, it's gonna have ground shrinkage if you think about it. When, you, when that deer walks in and you see him and you try your best to get your hand on your bow and get an arrow in him, then he's a shooter. I mean, there's no, you don't even have to think about it.
Transition from these bucks going from food to chasing does is a big deal. And, and around the 1st of November, um, it starts, at any moment it could go crazy. And you could go from seeing, you know, 100 inch deer to a, a 250 could walk out at any moment. And that's, that's why I love hunting up here. Cause you don't, you don't know what's coming out. I mean, we get in a stand, we beat the rattling horns. I mean, I've got, I've skipped my knuckles up on both hands beating rattling horns this week. The place where this deer was showing up is a big square 160 acre CRP field that has a big funnel, goes right down the center of it. And there's a patch of oak trees that's, I'm going to say, close to three acres, something like that. It's got a little creek going through it, bends, forms a little island. Acorns are everywhere in this hole. I mean, there's, it's obvious reason why the deer are there. They've got rubs everywhere, and, and um, it's just a beautiful spot. It sets up unbelievable. We need a east or a northeast wind, or even a southeast wind and it's a perfect place to hunt. The deer can't wind you. And of course we had a east northeast wind and, and uh, so we went and sat it and I mean it just turned on fire. The, the deer came from every direction. Actually I don't know how you could pick a wind to hunt there because we had, we had deer come from every direction in that hole. It's just one of those spots that you know something like this is going to walk through sooner or later. There's too much activity. And this time of the year when there's that many does, um, you're going to have a big deer show up. When you have that many does around the 1st of November when this transition's happening, you basically just got to get a good wind uh, so they can't get downwind of you and put your time in. And of course, it's kind of important to make a shot, I guess. When they step out, a deer that size, I don't care if you've killed three 250s, that deer will get you blood pumping in a hurry. I mean, yeah, and it, it, if, yeah, and if that doesn't get you excited, then you need to start quail hunting because I don't know what else to tell you, you're playing billiards or something. I've killed a bunch of big deer. That's about as nervous I've ever been. That deer was within 23 yards of us for five, 10 minutes and just walking around behind that brush. I had 10 holes to shoot in, but I mean, you'd have had to thread the needle. I can't wait to put my hands on that dude's main beams are that big around. Sweet. Look like a Coke can, baby. That is a Coke can. Here he is, Cat Daddy. Look right here. Now, if he don't get up and run off on us, it'll be a great, my God, look at the mass. That is why we do this. What a monster. What a monster. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. Our desire here at Cherokee Sports is to make each and every one of you more successful each time you go afield. I'm Brett Fulcher with Cherokee Sports. I'm a blood brother. Are you? Blood Brothers TV rocks. If you'd like a chance of having your hunt failed, just become a Cherokee Sports Blood Brother by going to www.bloodbrotherstv.com. A new breed of TV, brought to you by Cherokee Sports.
You've been watching Blood Brothers TV.